truly an anytime guest. Anytime we, uh, he's free and up for talking, we're up for talking to him. The great Robert Griffin III from the Worldwide Leader in Sports back here on the show. How are you, RG3? I'm doing good, Rich, and I appreciate the intro and you having me on, man. You've been uh, huge for my career. So oh, please. Thank you for that, man. You're the best, truly. Uh, love watching you, love listening to you, love your social media feeds and everything like that. So let me just jump in uh, going uh, off the board with you. The the shot of Victor Wembanyama holding the uh, baseball like a grape. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have to ask a world-class athlete and, and top draft choice in his sport, what did you think of that when you saw that uh, photograph of him? No, I RG3? mean, Wim Banyana is, uh, is just incredible. I mean, you look at that baseball. Like you said, it looks like a grape. Yeah. Could you imagine how hard he could throw that bad boy if he had some baseball training? <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if there's a sport that the guy can't do right. uh, at that size and with the wingspan that he has. But I do like the fact that he picked himself over LeBron because you got to have that self-confidence when you have that much momentum. Uh, coming with you into the NBA. So I think he's already reached enlightenment. He's good. Well, what would you, what advice would you give him? Because uh, he says he wants to be best at the media. He wants to be best off the field. I mean, um, you know, with all due respect to the French sports scene, um, he's about to feel it. He's about to get it. What advice would you have for him about the stage he's about to walk on, Robert? Yeah, my advice to him would just be to continue to stay focused on who he is and I, I feel like listening to his interviews, he knows who he is. He knows why he's driven the way that he's driven. He understands what's in front of him, and he's willing to go out and do what it takes to be the most successful basketball player in person that he can be. So I would say when the times get tough and the media gets tough on him, because you know that they will, uh, just key in on those things, and it'll allow him to continue to be successful. Robert Griffin the third here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's jump into the world of football. What happened with Stephon Diggs last week, and, and how do you think that might have a ripple effect once the toe meets ball in an actual playing season, Robert? Ooh, well, I mean, when you talk about when toe meets ball, I think the Bills need a happy Stephon Diggs to win the Super Bowl. And if you notice, I didn't say motivated, because I think he's always no- motivated. I think he's always working his tail off to be the best. Um, but when you have a happy Stephon Diggs, I mean, since he got to, to Buffalo, he's tied for first in catches with Devontae Adams. He's sixth in the receiving touchdowns, and he's fourth in the league in receiving yards. So that's a happy Stephon Diggs. Him and Josh Allen seemed to have a bromance rolling, uh, it felt like, for years there until there was the the problem with their game against the Bengals in the playoffs. So I think it's clear this is a personal thing between Josh and and Diggs, uh, and they have to get their their partnership back on the field. And, And that's part of playing quarterback. I think Josh Allen's running into that right now. Everything is fine until it's not fine in a relationship when it comes to a quarterback and a wide receiver like Diggs. So Josh has to manage that relationship the right way, and I think he's the only one that can rectify it. So what is it, though? I mean, what did you see in that game? What are you hearing? What are you potentially willing to share? What What is it, do you think? Yeah, Rich, that's why you're a great interviewer, man. You, you know when people have information and they're trying not to say anything. So, <laughs> so I, I've talked with uh, people close to the situation and and really what it boils down to is in that last game against the Bengals uh, Diggs was the most targeted receiver in that game I think he had 10 targets in that game but when they were down 17 they had a 10 play drive that ended in a turnover on downs and Diggs only got one ball thrown his way so you would think that uh, a player of Diggs' caliber with the relationship that he has with Josh Allen in those moments, he would look to him more often, more often, and, and that didn't happen. I think that was something that why we saw Diggs hold his hands up, looking at Josh Allen on the sideline when they had the little tiff that was shown on TV. And Diggs wants to win like every other player wants to win. And I think that if they can rekindle that bromance, Josh Allen's got to do something to re- relight that fire between the two of them. And I think that will be, will be the key for the Bills to, to be successful this year, especially since they have Super Bowl aspirations. Well, let's chop this up a little bit, Robert Griffin the third, because, you know, the issue, I think, for that Bills offense, and I think most ever, I'm, I'm not reinventing the wheel here, was Josh Allen trying to do too much, feeling that he had to do too much. The red zone being a particularly uh, difficult spot for that team because of it. And to me, I think they've fixed it in a way, or at least they've, 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 they've hit it enough by getting Damian Harris at the running back position, by bringing in Latavius Murray at the running back position, by also getting Dalton Kincaid in the draft 
The question is, though, if those are the answers, how will that rest with Diggs if he's not the one getting the football in those situations, Robert? That's the rub here, yeah, potentially. Yeah, I, I, Rich, I don't disagree as far as with Josh Allen constantly having to put the cape on. You know, I talked about this a lot last year. You know, they, they're constantly asking him to be Superman, and he can do it. And then quite honestly, as the year went on, I realized that Josh Allen actually plays his best when he's trying to play, be Superman every single play. That's when he's the most comfortable. That's when you see all the creative runs and the big-time passes from him. But I think the Bills took a concerted effort this offseason to say, we got to be able to play bruising football up front if we need to. And then the draft pick of, of Dalton Kincaid gives them position variability on offense. So they don't always have to line up with three wide or four wide. They can go two wide and two tight end, or they can put them in the backfield and run some sets like that. I think they are taking a conscious effort to say, all right, if it gets becomes a bad weather game again and we can't throw the football around, we got to be able to run the ball. we got to be able to utilize our tight ends down the seams. And I think that's what they did. But the bottom line, Rich, is without Stephon Diggs, their receiver room goes from, you know, arguably one of the, the top five, top ten receiver rooms in the league to not even in the top 15. So they need Stephon Diggs to be that guy for them, and he'll always get his targets because his desire to win and his ability is aligned with their ability to be explosive on offense. So I think that aligns perfectly. So he'll get his targets regardless. It's just about fixing this little personal uh, situation that's going on between him and Josh Allen. And then in, in one last one for you on that, can't the answer be, hey, Stefan, you know, stuff happens. We, we, we had the, the drive the, that we had and just – you know, I'll look for you more. I promise I'll look for you more. You know me. I know you. We're, we're tight like that. Can that actually fix it? Or it only fixes it to the point where the first Monday night when you and the rest of the worldwide leader will have the huge game of Allen and the Bills <laughs> at Aaron Rodgers and the Jets in his Rodgers debut at the Jets, that this could just come home to roost and, and drive six that night and bring it all up again, Robert. Yeah, I think the sooner they can get back on the field and play in football games that, that actually count, uh, like you're saying on that Monday night, I think the better it is for, for everybody. Here's the bottom line. Stephon Diggs does get targeted by Josh Allen a lot, mm-hmm. a lot more than anybody else on the, on the football field. I think this really just came to a head in that playoff game because in that moment, if it was handled differently, when Diggs had his, his uh, emotional outburst on the sideline, if that was handled differently by Josh Allen and the team, I think we wouldn't be talking about this today. But it wasn't. You know, They kind of ignored him, and there was a whole scene after that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that has led to some of these rumblings throughout the offseason. But when they get up there and they go up against the Jets, he's going to target Stephon Diggs because that's what they need to do to win games. And if he doesn't target him, we'll continue to talk about this yes. for the duration of the season. Robert Griffin the 3rd from the Worldwide Leader in Sports here on the Rich Eisen show. I'd like you to interpret a tweet for me if you don't mind. DeAndre Hopkins sort of out of the blue yesterday tweeted out uh who's ever whoever's in my future wide receiver group, I promise I will make your job easy. Why do you think he felt compelled or necessary or just had it on his mind to tweet that, Robert? Rich, I think DeAndre or DeHop, you know, put that out there because there are certain receivers or certain position groups that always feel a certain type of way when the team or the fans or the media starts perpetuating stories or pushing stories about them joining the team. Why? The natural inclination is to think DeHop joins the team and now my targets are gone away. Mm. Or if I'm the third receiver, I'm now the fourth receiver. Well, that's, that's the reality of it. So I think what Diop is trying to do is get the receiver room to the teams that are looking at him or that he's looking to go to to understand, I'm coming here, and yes, I might take away some of your targets, but I'm going to increase the quality of the targets you do get because you're not going to have all the attention of the defense. That's why I think it is, uh, and I think it's actually a beautifully worded tweet as well. Kudos to him. So there's been, I guess, hmm, how do I follow up here? So so he, he might have identified a place where he'd like to go, and he's heard uh, through grapevines that uh, players, you know, would not like his presence there because it does eat into their their reps or it eats into their, you know, targets, or general managers might be concerned about that, and he's sending that out there on Twitter. Is that what you're saying, you think? I don't think it's 
Rich, I don't think it's general managers. You know, I don't think most players, you know, trying to talk to GMs or head coaches through Twitter probably isn't the best avenue <laughs> <laughs> to, to make that happen. Yes. I, I do think it has to do with players. Um, and, and I'm obviously, we're just speculating yeah. here. Yeah. But I did see Devontae Parker's, you know, press conference when they asked him about D-Hop. And, you know, I'm not saying that Devontae was upset or anything like that, but it was more of like the Patriot way, you know, we're good here, uh, next question. I think D-Hop maybe feels some of that. Uh, and like I said, that's pure speculation. But at the end of the day, he's just trying to let the groups know, like, yeah, I'm coming in and, and I'll probably be the number one, but I'm going to also make your job easier with targets. I'm here to be a mentor to you guys so you can learn. You know, he's 30-plus he's 30, 30 years old. He understands where he's at in his career, but he's still a number one wide receiver. And I think there's two teams that, that really need him. It's New England and, and Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. And those are the places. That's, that's obviously where he visited. Um, wh- what about uh, a team that's loaded already, bringing him in and just adding him on top? What, what about Kansas City? What about anybody like that? Do you think D Hop can – wind up there dallas maybe another one what do you think about those possibilities robert well I'll, I'll do that in reverse rich dallas is an issue just because of the amount of bodies that they have there with cd lamb brandon cooks you got gallup there um they would have to do something with that room hmm. to to make it viable to bring in a d hop especially with mccarthy wanting to move more towards a run-centric offense bringing in another wide receiver now being four deep with really talented wide receivers, I mean, they might that be one of the better rooms in, in all of the NFL. I think that makes it a little tough for them. When you talk about Kansas City, I always thought that D Hop to Kansas City was a was a great fit. Uh, you know, Kansas City obviously lost Juju Smith-Schuster to the Patriots. I just feel like he could fit a void there, give him another number one, another chain mover uh, to go along with Travis Kelsey, and then they've got the speed on the outside with MVS and the guys. So I, I like. The Chiefs, I'm not so big on him going to the Cowboys. The reason I say Tennessee is because they need, oh, yeah. you know, the bodies. They got Traylon Burks. You're talking about um, Kyle Phillips as their slot receiver. And then Westbrook, uh, Akina, Akina, I mean, um, at wide receiver as their number two. You know, bringing in D-Hop there would definitely fit the mold. The question is, are they ready to win now? If you ask, you know, Coach Rabel, yes. But to the rest of the league, is that a spot that D-Hop is going to be able to go win a championship in? And there might be some 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 split views on that. So you think Dalvin to Miami, Dalvin Cook to Miami just looks so simple um, that it's going to it's going to happen? Or they have a pretty loaded room themselves right there, Rob? Yeah, what do you think there? Yeah, they do have a loaded room. And, and Coach Mike McDaniel was very smart the you know, past couple of days to kind of talk up that room so they don't, you know, feel the – not necessarily the pressure – but uh, feel like they're not liked because of the connection of Dalvin to Miami. Now, Dalvin in Miami makes sense. It's his hometown, hometown team. Uh, he's a dynamic back, you know, coming off a of four consecutive thousand yard uh, season, still has a lot in the tank. But I know these two guys want to team up. At least that's what Dalvin stated, uh, I think, yesterday or, or two couple days ago on Adam Schefter's podcast. Yeah. And, and the problem with that is, NFL players just don't have the leverage or the power like NBA players do to say, hey, we want to team up, and then they make it happen. So the reality is both these guys want big paydays, as they should. Both guys want to be on a contender because, you know, they know where they're at in their careers. But not many true contenders this year can afford both of them, to bring them both in. Um, And that's why I point to New England because I think New England can actually bring them both in, and it would increase their chances of being a Super Bowl contender overnight. Sure would. Robert Griffin the third. before I let you go, sir, I see on your social feeds as well, the football camp at your alma mater at Baylor that you recently did and the, the messages you're giving to these kids as well. What would you take out of it, Robert? No, nah, Rich, uh, honestly, it's just been a blessing to be able to give back to the community and, and see the next generation of stars come out there and play. You know, this past uh, weekend, we were able to get 330 campers out there. Jeez. You know, hats off to the current coaches and the players for coming out there and helping. Um, you know, Dave Aranda has been amazing in, in just the way that he's, you know, reconstructed the program and, and been a lot, allowing me to be a part of it. 
But, you know, we're out there trying to teach these young guys how to grow and develop at every position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, DB, tight end, O-line, D-line. only thing we didn't have there, Rich, was kickers and punters. And <laughs> kickers and punters are people, too. Don't yes, get me they wrong. Are. Um, yeah, they but are. But they're people, too. But we didn't have them at the camp. Maybe we'll have them there next year. But, honestly, being able to get to know guys like Clemson's quarterback, uh, Cade Klubnick, uh, he came to the camp in 2019. Mm-hmm. We had a quarterback. Uh, that just committed to Memphis this uh, last week, and then a quarterback that committed to Purdue um, last year. So the talent that's running through the camp is amazing. Being able to be close up to these guys and see them work and help them get better at their craft has been amazing as well. And we're doing it for so many positions on the football field. Uh, I'm truly blessed that Baylor's uh, partnered with me to make that happen year after year. Okay. Uh, Before I let you go into your summer, Robert Griffin III, and then look for more of my calls and texts um, getting ready for the football season, I'm going to throw a total macro question at you, okay? Okay. College or professional football team with a chance to win it all that we're not talking about right now? College or professional? Who are we not talking about that you think we should be talking about, Robert Griffin III? Give me that one. Yeah, college-wise, I would say Clemson. Okay. Bringing in uh, Garrett Riley, offense coordinator from TCU. Now, mm-hmm. I know they didn't have the greatest showing in the national championship game, but going to Clemson, getting those pre- the premier talent there, having Cade Klubnick as the quarterback, I think they've got an actual shot running through the ACC to be a national title contender. Okay. NFL-wise, I think we've hit just about every single team uh, that has a shot uh, to pull it off. I do think Miami is a strong contender again this year. Um, as long as Tua can stay healthy, I think that they have the pieces in place on offense and defense to, to really make a title run. Robert Griffin the third, thank you, as always, for coming on. I do love listening to you. You make me smarter as well. Thanks for the time, as always. <laughs> Appreciate for you, real. Rich, as always. Take God care. Bless, you, you bet. Right back at you. At RGIII, Robert Griffin the third, right here on The Rich Eisen Show, both Twitter and Instagram. Catch The Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 